All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm Shelly Slaypack, the City of Janesville's Recreation Director. Um, normally, alcohol licensing is handled through our City Clerk Treasurer's Office, but being that the election was recently, our uh, Clerk Treasurer uh, asked if I could do this. So bear with me, I'm, if I don't know something, I'll find an answer, but I believe I know just enough to, to get by through this presentation. There are alcohol ordinances, and everyone, again, will get this um, information sent out to them. So I'm not going to go too much into details. But if you go to the City of Janesville website, there's a wealth of information on just special events in general or any permit you could want. Um, I always go to the I want to find button. And then if you go to the ordinances, you can look up these ordinances. It's 6-62 um, to 6-65 that relates to alcohol licensing permitting on city property. So again, what I'm gonna talk about today is just city property. Um, private property is different because the city would not be issuing a permit for um, that for an event. There's three types of alcohol permits. There's private gathering permits, right? So that would be, for example, you're having a family reunion, you're having, maybe JPAC is going to have an employee and volunteer um, invite or gathering and they're going to rent the Riverside Park Pavilion and they want to serve, not sell, alcohol to their invited guests. That would not require a special event permit because it's by invite only. They know the list of volunteers. They know the list of staff that are invited to that event. Um, and there are seven pavilions with the city of Janesville that allow you to rent the pavilion and get a beer wine permit for an additional $50 for your private gathering. Now you can't sell anything and you can only um, uh, give out to your invited guests um, beer and wine. The next one I'm going to talk just a little bit about is the B5B6 permit and that's very um, not regularly that we do that permit and it's relatively new in the city, but it's within the B5, B6 zone in our downtown area. And that means if you have approved to close off streets and the one event that does, uh, is authorized for this is the Grand Prix that was just talked about. So everything within that closed off area can consume alcohol. So you can carry out from a licensed establishment. So. If your business is a licensed establishment within that closed off street zone, you can, I, maybe I'm an attendee at the event, I can go into Riley's Sports Bar, purchase a drink, and carry it out and walk to um, the event, okay? The one I'm gonna talk about the most is a temporary class B beer permit because that's what most public events are going to apply for. Reverting back a little bit though to the B5, B6, this is the Grand Prix bike races map. And you can see they, they really are good about drinking pink. So they have to have signage throughout and you can only drink within the pink. And that pink is the soft closure. That's not, so every road is closed within that, okay? Um, and that's where if you're a licensed establishment within there, you can sell drinks and carry it out. They also, by having this extra permit, um, can have little beer tents within their actual event as well. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, something like if we're going to use the, like, the square, the yep. square, do we get something like this, or do we get the other one? The other one. Okay. Yep. Okay. Who can apply for the other one? The Class B beer permit, which incorporates the town square and Festival Street. Um, you have to be a nonprofit organization, a bona fide club, that has to have been in existence for at least six months to apply. Or a church, lodge society, veterans association, fair association, chamber of commerce, or similar civic organization. Now, some people who may be running an event, a for-profit or business may run an event, how do they get to have beer sales? because they're partnering with a nonprofit organization or one of these organizations to handle the uh, liquor or the, the beer permit, okay? They cannot apply, all right? That makes sense to everyone. 
you do your permitting for alcohol licensing at City Hall on the second floor clerk treasurer's office. They are the ones who start it. Any public event thing with permits for city, go to that spot in the city website. That's the friendly URL to get there. Uh, backsplash, backslash special events. It's got everything you want, including a tab for beer uh, and alcohol licensing. It's a $10 fee per event, okay? An example, Music at the Mar, run by DJI. It's a concert every Tuesday for 10 weeks. They pay that $10 fee for each concert, okay? So it's every event. They only have to do an application for one time if it's kind of a recurring event. But if you're doing five different types of events, it's that $10 and a different application for each one. That thing I just passed around is the application that you can turn in. You can turn in that hard copy or um, you can, actually the, the, for the alcohol licensing, it is just a hard copy that has to be turned in. You cannot do it online, okay? New events must be turned in the 15th of the month prior to that uh, event month. For example, if you're having an event on June 26th, you need to have your application in by the 15th. That is a strict deadline by the clerk's office um, because they have to get the, that information into the agenda for the ALAC or the Alcohol Licensing Advisory Committee because any new event wanting to sell alcohol or just provide alcohol when the public is invited must have um, it approved through the Alcohol Licensing Advisory Committee. Okay, you can't be late. If you miss that deadline, maybe you've got a June, whatever, you've got a June 27th event and you turned it in May 16th, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to have it. You're gonna have to change your event date. It's very strict. If there's, like if you have an event yearly, I assume the second year it's not a new event anymore? Precisely. If you have an annual or a recurring or, re or returning event, however you wanna word it, you do not have to go before ALAC. And in that case, it um, just needs to be in 15 pr days prior to the event. However, it's approved administratively for a returning event, so there is a little bit of wiggle room because we don't have to ha go through the public process of getting it on an agenda um, for, for a vote. If you were to miss a year for whatever reason, um, do you then start over as a new event? If you didn't no. Okay. The only time you would start over is if there's, uh, if it's an absolute new, new event or if there's significant changes. So, you know what I mean, maybe an event is changing uh, a huge dynamic uh, of it, maybe a, a change in location, um, something like that would require it to be considered a new event and go back to ALAC. Again, ALAC approval, uh, ALAC is a committee of the city of Janesville, it consists of seven members, five citizens and two city council members, they meet every Tuesday in City Hall at 8 a.m., uh, first Tuesday of every month. If you are having a new event, you should have a representative come to that meeting. You know, you're not going to be giving a full-on presentation, but they're gonna have you come up and answer questions likely, and you're gonna to wanna to be in there to support the event, defend any questions, um, and answer any questions the ALAC may have of you. And again, returning events can be approved administratively through the clerk treasurer. Allowed alcohol with a class B beer permit is beer or fermented malt beverages. Your fermented malt beverages are like your seltzers, your Mike's Hard Lemonade, those types of things. They cannot be, per I can't go to Quick Trip and purchase, or Walmart and purchase 12 packs of beer. Anything that you're selling must be purchased through through your license, through a licensed distributor. So Frank's Beer, um, those licensed distributors that are, that are around our area. Can't go to a store and purchase it, okay? You run out at the event, you can't go to the store and purchase it. Um, no hard alcohol by any of these. So again, it's just your fermented malt beverages and beer. Nonprofit organizations or any of those that I said can apply up to two times per year for a uh, wine uh, permit. So that would allow you to do wine. So that's why DJI is allowed to do two and only two wine walks per year. 
permit policies, so you can have cans, but if you're gonna have, uh, most people do tap beer, they have to be clear, they have to be plastic, no glass is allowed, um, there has to be signage, and this is on page two of that application that tells about the permit, there has to be signage in the area that just says those rules, says this stay in the, in the permitted area, no drinking allowed outside event, stuff like that, okay? So for example, at Music at the Marv, you know, there's signs up that say no carry-ins allowed because if you have a permit, you don't want people obviously carrying in alcohol because it hurts your sales, but also it's not allowed per your event. So having signage up is required, no carry-ins allowed, do not take alcohol beyond this point, stuff like that at your main entrance and exit points. Fencing is no longer required. Back in the day, the city of Janesville did require fencing in a beer air permit area, and that is no longer required. What you're turning into ALAC is the application and a map of, where, of your event area, because your event area is what's being approved for alcohol consumption, okay? Friends of Riverside Park, for their event, it's all in the north end, so we're, they're showing on their map that they get turned in this north end of the park, and then that's where the alcohol is allowed to be consumed. Um, wristbands are required, and I have it back there. It's just wristbands.com, we always get them from, they're just the cheap, uh, cheap paper ones you can have. You know, a lot of people, sponsors, you know, you're doing, you know, maybe Flannel Fest, put, put a sponsor's logo on your wristbands, but they are required. You go to Music at the Marv, they're gonna, you know, the first time you purchase a, a drink, they're gonna put a, a wristband on you, okay? Every event, that's one of the requirements. And the other requirement is you have to have a licensed bartender present, okay? Um, you can get a licensed bartender, it's, it's fairly easy. I, I'm a licensed bartender, I think it's, uh, the permit's rather simple. There's a test that you take online that takes a couple of hours. Um, so if you have people in mind that you might want to be a licensed bartender, it doesn't mean that they have to be a bartender at a bar. It's a, it's a very simple process to, to get somebody licensed to, to be a bartender and an online course. Um, another thing, and JM4C, Janesville Mobilizing for Change, now has scanners, if you want, for whoever's working events to scan IDs, and it brings up, you know, if it's a valid license and if they're over 21, so kind of cool. You only one, need one licensed bartender on site, okay? So if I'm the licensed bartender at Music at the Mar, I have to be present, right? I'm, I'm in charge of the event. Anything that goes wrong is, is on me, essentially, in a way. You're supervising the event. So um, if, I, if I'm there and I say, Julia, I need you to help me with um, the beer sales, you're gonna be in charge. I'm gonna give you direction on what you need to do. You need to card people. They can only be 21, you know. You aren't licensed, you aren't the licensed bartender, but you're still there helping, okay? That licensed bartender really should, though, be in that area where the beer is being served but what I'm getting at is other people can also be there assisting, checking IDs, okay? And the more licensed bartenders, the better. It's an annual licensing that people can get through the city's clerk treasurer's office, and to be honest, I don't, you have to be 18 to get it. Um, the course is, is I wanna say, only 10 or $15. Uh, the one I took is servingalcohol.com and then you click your state, you need to make sure that you take the test uh, within the state that you live, uh, and then the, the permit is, is very, very cheap. So something to invest in if you're doing annual fundraisers and, and whatnot. Nathan? Yeah, yeah. so Shelly, um, at JPAC, anyone who's a staff member is required to be a licensed bartender, and so when we do that, just so if I ever left, or like, something emergency happened at home, I go, we always have one person who's on staff here at JPAC. So if you're running an event, um, I don't know, it's just my thought that anyone who's like a staple on that event to just get- Absolutely. So, it's, and would you agree that it's fairly It's super easy. easy. It's the equivalent of a driver's ed test. Absolutely. Or like the written and so it's, it's not hard. Yeah, and then I, in, in, to, to Nathan's point, um, once you have your initial bartender's license, um, I, it, it's good for three years, I believe. So then you're just 
upping it. So it's not just an annual investment. It lasts that three years. So if you've got, you know, new staff coming in and, you know, it just, it really does make sense. Or your key volunteers, you know, that's a good thing. Hey, you're, you're a loyal key volunteer for us. We'd like to put you through this um, bartender training, pay for your certification. You know, would you be willing to do that for us? Does anyone have any other questions on any of the alcohol licensing? I figured it would be one of the shorter topics today. Um, it's pretty cut and dry with alcohol licensing. Thank you. All right. Well, that's all I have on alcohol licensing. <laughs>